On June 24, 1982, a British Airways Boeing 747 faced a terrifying situation. All four engines suddenly failed while flying over the Indian Ocean. The huge plane started descending, and the pilots had only minutes to restart the engines before disaster struck. This is the incredible story of British Airways Flight 9. On the evening of June 24, 1982, three pilots and 12 flight attendants boarded a British Airways Boeing 747 at Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. On board there were 248 passengers, most of whom had embarked on their journey almost a day earlier from London's Heathrow Airport. The passengers had endured a long and tiring journey. The passengers boarded the British Airways 747 aircraft preparing for a five-hour flight over the ocean. The British Airways 747 aircraft Arriving from India was scheduled to continue its journey from Malaysia to the relatively low population city of Perth in Western Australia. The connecting flights of the aircraft were as follows. It first took off from London, England then arrived in Bombay, India followed by Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia and its next destination would be Perth, Australia. Afterward it would fly to Melbourne and finally reach New Zealand. At the moment the aircraft was in the Malaysian phase of its planned flight legs. While many passengers were tired from the long flight the crew who had arrived in Kuala Lumpur a few days earlier felt fresh as they boarded their massive aircraft and headed to the cockpit. They had no idea that they were about to face the greatest challenge of their entire careers. The flight was under the command of Captain Eric Mood, a young and experienced 41-year-old 747 captain at British Airways. With thousands of flying hours to his credit, he had accumulated a wealth of experience in various aircraft. Interestingly, Captain Moody had initially begun his career as a glider pilot which would soon prove to be quite fortunate. Captain Moody was in the pilot's seat joined by 32-year-old First Officer Roger Greaves and 40-year-old Flight Engineer Freeman in the cockpit. Freeman, the Flight Engineer, was highly experienced and had extensive knowledge of the aircraft systems. He even trained new flight engineers. With such a competent and skilled crew, passengers could feel at ease knowing they were in safe hands. Let's take a quick break. We've put a lot of effort into this video, so if you find it informative, please remember to subscribe and like. Your support allows us to create more content for you. The flight was already 30 minutes behind schedule. Usually a 30 minute delay wouldn't cause much concern for passengers, but on this particular night it would prove to be significant. Captain Moody taxied the aircraft to the runway at Kuala Lumpur as he would be flying the plane during this leg of the journey. The weather was favorable with clear skies and light winds making it perfect conditions for flying. At that moment something was happening deep underground that the pilots didn't know about. Around 1,300 kilometers southeast of Kuala Lumpur the Galungung volcano on Java Island had erupted. The volcanic eruptions released a significant amount of ash and dust into the atmosphere forming a toxic layer that was rapidly ascending. Unbeknownst to the crew this ash cloud was moving swiftly along the flight path of the Boeing 747 which was about to take off. At 8 p.m., the captain piloting the aircraft approached the runway, completely unaware of the volcano's eruption. After receiving takeoff clearance from the tower, they powered up the Rolls-Royce engines of the massive 747 and began increasing speed on the runway. After swiftly reaching takeoff speed the plane's wheels were lifted off the runway and they veered southeast towards Perth, Australia. The first two hours of the flight proceeded according to plan. The captain ascended the aircraft to 37,000 feet, the designated cruising altitude for most of the journey to Australia. During this time the 248 passengers were served dinner while the plane smoothly cruised along at 37,000 feet. The pilots performed standard en route checks comparing their fuel against the flight plan's amounts and made routine radio calls to air traffic control. At one point Captain Moody briefly left the cockpit to use the bathroom. Before leaving he checked the weather radar to ensure clear skies ahead, and indeed the night sky appeared perfectly clear. When the captain returned to the cabin he noticed an unusual amount of smoke even though smoking was permitted on airplanes until 35 years ago. However, this smoke was different from the smell of cigarettes. Gray smoke started entering the cabin through the air vents, and passengers quickly became aware of it. Initially, the captain suspected a fire and instructed the cabin crew to identify the source to take immediate action if necessary. A fire at 37,000 feet would be one of the worst scenarios they could face. The captain was unaware that that the smoke was actually volcanic ash from the eruption. Shortly after, a cabin crew member urgently called the captain back to the cockpit, where they all
all noticed a surprising glow on the cockpit windshield resembling lightning strikes. The co-pilot mentioned that something had suddenly illuminated the windshield. When passengers looked out of their windows, they saw a sparkle covering the plane's wing and engines. The pilots initially thought it might be a weather phenomenon called St. Elmo's Fire, which occurs around pointed conductive objects during stormy weather. However, when they checked the weather radar, it indicated clear skies along their route with no sign of storms or clouds. Under normal conditions St. Elmo's fire resembling small lightning strikes on the windshield is harmless. But this situation seemed different, as the cockpit glass and the plane's surface were shining brightly. What caused the cockpit windshield and plane's surface to glow intensely? The intense glow formed on the pilot's windshields was the result of static electricity discharge from the dry ash emitted by the volcano. When the fast-moving 747 aircraft encountered the ash cloud, it caused a spark-like effect on the glass surface, posing a potential threat to the plane. When the pilots switched on the landing lights, they noticed that the plane was surrounded by a layer of cloud. The intense glow experienced earlier was not limited to the cockpit windshield, but also extended to the left wing of the aircraft, creating a striking shine. As the co-pilot observed the fourth rightmost engine on fire, he inquired about the status of engines one and two on the captain's side. To their shock, the captain saw that the first engine was also on fire. The engines were ablaze, and thick smoke filled the cabin, making it difficult for passengers to breathe. The smoke increased the cabin temperature, and the bitter fumes irritated passengers' throats and eyes. On the other side, passengers witnessed flames several meters long coming out of the engines. The cabin crew worked to calm the passengers, assuring them that the situation was not serious and that they would attempt to land as soon as possible. The flight engineer checked the aircraft's instruments, which showed no signs of fire, and the engines were running smoothly. But when they looked out the window, the view they saw was very different from what the instruments were telling them. Shortly after, engine number 4 where the flames had been seen stopped working. In such situations, there are emergency procedures to follow. When an engine fails, the pilots first execute an engine shutdown procedure to safely position the engine. While trying to shut down engine number 4, unexpectedly engine number 2 and then all the engine stopped. This created a real emergency over the ocean, and the pilots started to panic. They had plenty of fuel on board, but they couldn't figure out what caused the engine failures. They tried to make a mayday emergency call to the controller in Jakarta, but the ash cloud's magnetic field disrupted the transmission, making their voices unclear to the controller. At that moment, another plane flying nearby heard the emergency message from the distressed 747 aircraft and acted as a mediator between the controller and the plane. It conveyed the emergency situation experienced by the 747 aircraft to the controller. The aircraft that was in the air at the time and served as an intermediary decided to cancel its flight and return after relaying the message to the controller. Fearing a similar unfortunate emergency might happen to them, in their desperate situation, the pilots started to glide with the nose down. Contrary to popular belief, airplanes have the ability to glide even if all engines fail. The 747 was capable of gliding for kilometers at that altitude, even with all four engines out. From an altitude of 10,000 meters, the pilots had a glide distance of approximately 165 kilometers and less than half an hour to find a place to land on the water. When all the engines are gone, how does the plane glide and not fall straight down? To explain this in simple terms according to the laws of physics, the pilots increase speed by pointing the nose of the plane downward. By doing so, they descend by converting their altitude, which is potential energy into kinetic energy. Returning to the plane in the emergency, the pilots made several attempts to restart the engines, but each time they failed. The volcanic particles hitting the aircraft's surface caused a powerful lightning flash that startled the pilots. They were left astonished and in disbelief at the striking light, almost as if they had entered another dimension. In a modern passenger jet, the possibility of all four engines failing is highly unlikely and something the pilots had never experienced before. Faced with this unusual situation, they began to question if they had made any mistakes. However, upon rechecking the controls, everything appeared to be in order according to procedure. The captain attempted to turn the plane back towards an airport near Jakarta, flying over 3.5 kilometers of mountainous terrain at a high altitude to reach it. But with the engines not functioning, flying over the mountains at this height was not possible. Their only option was to land on the water, significantly reducing their chances of survival. The pilots were under immense 
intense pressure, and their efforts to resolve the situation proved to be unresponsive. Inside the cabin, the passengers remained surprisingly quiet, curious, and waiting to see what would unfold. Meanwhile, the pilots made repeated attempts to restart their engines. The airspeed indicators in front of them displayed different readings. To reach the required airspeed for engine restart, the captain pushed the yoke forward, quickly increasing the altitude to increase speed. However, the sudden descent triggered a cabin pressure warning in the cockpit. Since the engines were not functioning, the aircraft's pressurization system also failed, leading to a rapid drop in cabin pressure. As the pilots descended swiftly, oxygen masks automatically dropped in the cabin for passengers and crew to use. Yet, the co-pilot's oxygen mask was not working despite everyone else wearing theirs. At their current altitude of 26,000 feet, there wasn't enough oxygen to survive without the assistance of oxygen masks. The captain faced a difficult decision if they descended slowly. The first officer whose oxygen mask wasn't working would struggle to breathe and could potentially lose consciousness. On the other hand, descending quickly would reduce their glide time and distance. The captain considering his colleague's situation took the risk and decided to descend to 20,000 feet where there is more oxygen. They began descending at a rate of 6,000 feet per minute. It became clear that unless the engine started soon, reaching the nearest airport was impossible, and their only option would be to land in the ocean. The crew had made almost 50 attempts to restart the engines, and now they were giving it last tries before preparing for a water landing. Just as they were about to turn towards the sea for the landing, the sparkling on the cockpit windshield started to disappear, and with a loud noise, engine number 4 came back to life. The plane had lost a significant amount of altitude, and the pilots were planning to fly around the mountain and land with one engine at the nearby airport. Just as they were making these plans, engine number two suddenly started working. One by one, all the previously shut down engines began functioning again. The reason was simple, the pilots had descended out of the volcanic ash cloud. Relieved, the flight crew informed the tower and the passengers that all four engines were now operational. They immediately attempted to climb back to the previous altitude, but as they reached 15,000 feet, the cockpit windshield began to light up again. The plane had re-entered the ash cloud, causing one engine to fail once more. The captain realized that the cloud was severely damaging the engines, and the passengers worried about the possibility of a repeat scenario. Using the remaining three engines, the captain navigated the plane out of the cloud and continued their approach. Upon leaving the ash cloud, the cockpit windshield was badly damaged from the impact of volcanic ash at high speeds. Visibility was extremely poor, with only a small 5 cm section on the captain's side providing a clear view. To add to their difficulties, the glide slope system, used to adjust the altitude during landing, was not functioning. Only the left and right guiding device was operational for horizontal alignment. With limited visibility and manual control needed, the captain skillfully guided the plane for the landing through the small clear section of the windshield. The first officer continuously updated the captain about their altitude since the vertical distance device was also not working. Despite the challenging conditions, the captain successfully landed the plane on the runway after a long and adventurous flight. The passengers were in shock, trying to comprehend the ordeal they had just experienced. To help them relax, beverages and water were offered to all passengers. Upon disembarking, the pilots and passengers noticed severe damage to the plane's surface and engines. The livery had been completely removed due to friction with the volcanic ash, and the aircraft's exterior suffered significant harm. Investigators later revealed that the plane had entered the ash cloud of an erupting volcano, which caused the damage. The engines were found to be blocked with fine dust and rocks, but miraculously, they resumed working after exiting the ash cloud, showing no technical malfunctions. The eruption, located 160 kilometers southeast of Jakarta, led 60,000 locals to evacuate the area. The ash cloud, influenced by the wind, rose up to 15,000 meters and unexpectedly affected the Boeing 747's route. This incident provided a crucial lesson for aviation. New emergency procedures and recovery methods were added to pilot's simulator training to handle such situations. Moreover, it was realized that volcanic ash clouds are not visible on radar screens. These lessons significantly improved aviation safety, making airplanes today one of the safest modes of transportation in the world. The pilots, flight engineers, and cabin crew received several awards for their exceptional handling of the emergency. They remained calm and brave, saving the lives of all 263 people on board, including their own. Their actions made them true heroes of the incident.